Well, uh, welcome Thank you. Um, uh, to join me here on, on the on the interviews uh, channel that we're doing for B Sides Lisbon 2017. So, um, talk about uh, a bit about yourself. About what, what, why are you here? So we're just discussing that you actually you're giving a talk for two hours. <laughs> no, I'm not giving a talk for two hours. I'm only giving a talk for an hour. So um, yeah. So my name is Thomas. Uh, I work for a company called Digital Guardian, and one of my roles is to actually look at advanced threats, so look at what's essentially attacking data. So we're very specialized in data protection, right? Mm -hmm. So we look at, um, if you think about data leaks, you know, like mm -hmm. and GDPR in yeah. Europe right now. So what, we're trying, what we try to do is actually look at, help customers understand what kind of threats are happening to data. And that can be insider or outsider. And one of the challenges that we have is you can actually collect a lot of information when you're monitoring data, right? Mm -hmm. So when you're actually picking up, looking at data, you, you, you're potentially generating gigabytes and gigabytes of data. So how do you handle that? Well, a couple of years ago, people started talking about threat hunting and you started to see in the marketing literature. So I delved into that to see how, what, what really, what is it really about, right? And what, what do you do when you're doing, when you call yourself a threat hunter? Mm -hmm. So the presentation this, this afternoon is all about that. It's, a, it's a, like my story of how I how I came to understand threat hunting, but I also noticed some things that just don't work for me that we could do better. Mm. Such so, as? Talk, so just such as reliance on too much machine, right? To mm. Reliance on people are talking about, oh, we need machine, you know, a lot of these vendors are talking about, well, you need machine learning, you need AI to do, mm -hmm, to help mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. to do the threat hunting, you know, all this machine learning. I'm like, but, you know, there's nothing better than a pair of eyes attached to a brain, right? <laughs> so when you look at it, it's like, what are we actually missing, right? Because you've got all of, when you think about what's going on and you're looking at instant response, right? Because this is, this is an extension of instant response, yeah. essentially. Um, it's a means to actually start an incident response uh, event and then do all the forensics work that you need to do. So it's a means of detecting something. Um, but so the the idea is that we're so focused on triggering an, an incident response based on an alert, based on an event that we know, or we use things like MITRE ATT&CK, or we use some of the, all of these FBI notices or you know NIST notices or any sort of notices and things like that, latest attacks, that what are we actually missing though? Mm -hmm. You know, right? Because you're triggering on something that you know. What about all the unknowns, right? We've been talking about un the unknown unknowns for so many years. So how do you actually find them, right? And one of the founding principles is you need to understand your environment, right? You yeah. need to understand your infrastructure, what's happening. And one of the things that we don't do very well in, in security, and there's a lot of people that are trying to change that, I'm, I'm one of them that preaches that we need to think about the business rather than security. So we need to be more business aware, more business hmm. process aware. Security, I, I've, I don't know if you were lining talks last night, but one of the guys was talking about security, you know, being business aware or security, mm -hmm. you know, that's something that we need to focus more of our attention on because businesses change, they adapt, um, you have, you know, we've been talking about this for years as well, that the current generation is coming into work, into the workforce, and that current generation is enabled. I mean, IT it enabled, yeah. right? Yeah, it's like yeah. device enabled and everything. So they're bringing With in- Bring your own device, yeah. you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And they have expectations on what they want to do with IT and mm -hmm. what, with systems, right? And they expect to have all of these applications underhand. Yeah, right? they do. Things that a lot of businesses are trying to adapt to and at an alarming rate. So security kind of gets, as usual, but as a second thought, right? Yeah. So you kind of think, so So you need to, we need to change that attitude, right? We need to think, how do we do security in a sense that um, we, we become more business aware? Well, the, the, uh, putting that in, into kind of perspective, you have kind of two ways, right? We have the, the security, well, um, explain security to the, to the InfoSec professionals and explain security to consumers or to the yeah. other, to, to users. Yeah. And that's kind of, two different paths, right? Because um, at the end, um, well, someone once told that the, 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 the weakest link in, in security is actually the human being, right? It's not, it's not computer, it's not that. So it's, it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's the, the, the yeah, threat is the human, yeah, right? Yeah, exa exactly, exactly. So it's the, the guy be, uh, uh, behind the, well, between the, the chair Pancake. and... Uh, Pancake in, exactly, <laughs> between the chair and the computer. So, um, but bottom line, as you explained, so there's a lot of, uh, we bring in new devices to companies, we expect things to work 
as they do one on normal life with yeah. applications, with everything related. Um, and you, security usually tries, it's not, it's not um, ahead of things, it's usually tried to patch yeah. those it's kind of reactive, holes. Right? Exactly. It's reactive, reactive. versus so we need, proactive. Yeah. So we need to be more proactive regarding yeah. security. And yeah, have and people one, one of the ways, that, so this isn't really part of the talk this afternoon, but it's, it's something that I also try to talk to people about and, and I talk to a lot, about, a lot of potentially you know, some of the customers that I talk to and things like that. It's about being, to become that more proactive, you need to understand the business, you know, that we're going back to that, we need to understand the business directions, mm -hmm. you need to understand the business workflows, and you need to understand what's driving the business, right? Why the business might change direction, why things change, why they adapt new things. So if, you're, if you understand what is a normal days of activity, you mm -hmm. can start to detect the anomalies, right? So uh, patching the, the, the processes and workflows, right? Yeah. Yeah, essentially, yeah. You're looking at building something that's not technology based, but more under you know event or or, yeah. or correlation based, right? So if if a business is driving towards moving to Office three six five, how how do I adapt my processes and procedures, and potentially tools at the end of the day? But how do I adapt that to be to be more secure and not impede the business and so know you, what they need to do? You also mentioned about AI and machine learning related to security. Is that is that <coughs> something that we we should expect in the future, or you think? Uh, you think it's about coming. That as a it's probably going to. We're going to start. I, we saw it, it was. There's a big. There's been a big focus this year, and I mean, uh, I don't know if you if you've been if you went to Black Hat this year, but if you went to Black Hat, a lot of the little startup type activities that were going on, they were all talking about machine learning. They were all focused on t doing you know that machine <coughs> learning aspect. Um, it depends on the way you define machine learning. Um, so I don't know if you know Alex Pinto. I know, yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> so if you, if you saw I mean, Alex, is, I, I know Alex pretty well too. And if you talk to Alex, um, you know, it's it's not re it's machine learning isn't that complicated, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's about you know you have inputs and you want yeah. an output, so you train train yeah. you, you train your engine to produce that output. Um, we're we're collecting more and more events, right? We keep adding as a security professionals, we keep adding tools because. You have that next generation threat. You have that next generation thing, and so there's a next generation tool to help <laughs> you with that next generation. But you're generating data, and you're not really using it, right? Yep, you don't understand right. what's going on. So we have that business workflow mm -hmm. situation. So that's going to generate a set of events, a set of events which you understand, you can identify, yeah. and you can train your machine learning to actually say, okay, these are typical normal events. So here's something that I want you to weed out of all of, all of the noise that I'm seeing and all of the information that I'm seeing, mm -hmm. so that you can actually take. A condensed view of your information and highlight what's outside really of that scope, yeah. right? Yeah. What's really important exactly, um, and you can start to build trends. The problem I have right now is that I've looked at you know some of these quote unquote analytics AI machine learning solutions, and most of them are just basically um, they're um, oh crap, I'll have to think of the word. I forgot my Filters. Word. No, they're trend. They're trends. Okay. Right. They're calculated trends. So you're basically trending your data. Right? Mm. That's useless because uh, as an attacker, I could just hide in one. You know, oh, yes. I, you know, it's like it's really simple. I saw. I mean, I saw one because of that data protection aspect that we do. There was one that was trying to pitch us on. Oh, yeah, we can tell you when you use as a email in the typical email ratio, so we can just, we can highlight when somebody's trying to exfiltrate data mm -hmm. on a, on a meet via email. And I'm like, yeah, but we do that today. <laughs> like, well, how do you do that today? Well, it's it's a trend, right? <laughs> I mean, a, new, a user comes in, 9 o'clock in the morning, he turns on his Outlook client, yeah. Outlook gets, the email gets downloaded, he responds to the majority of his emails, he does some work, he might respond to one, two emails during the day. Lunchtime, he goes out, comes back, there's another email flow, yeah. and at the end of the day, there's very little emails where we don't run it. It's like, yeah, but we can do it better. It's like, okay, here's, here's some data, do it better. <laughs> it's like, I literally, I mean, I showed them my charts with, basic yeah. statistical analysis versus their machine learning charts. And it was like a one-to-one -one match. So, I'm ba so, you, so basically, you're asking me to pay a crap load of money <laughs> to get a statistical engine. <laughs> no, but it's math. And that, this yeah. is where, if you know Alex, it's yeah. like when people tell you it's math, <laughs> just walk away. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it, that's why I come back to my, you know, in my talk, I talk about there's nothing better than a, 
yeah. you know, a pair of eyes attached to a human brain because the human brain is, is fantastic. You can you know correlate things yeah, in, exactly. a, in a different manner than any system will ever be able to. Yeah, because it has also the broader picture and you can understand yeah. the, the, yeah. the human behavior, right? Um, yeah. So, uh, Paul, just to end this, so uh, you're still, you, you're one of the organizers as well from the B-Sides London, right? Correct. Yeah. And you're here today at B-Sides Lisbon yeah. for the first time, is that it? Yeah, this is my first time. Yeah. Right, so how do you compare both, or can you compare, or is it something? No, I do, so I've, you know, I've, I do regularly go to B-Sides Las Vegas, I run B-Sides London, um, I I went to B-Sides Amsterdam this year, it was the first time I've, I've been twice to B-Sides Athens. <laughs> Uh, besides Vienna as well, I've, I've been for a few times. It's all different because although we're, you know, we're a quote unquote global community, each, I think each country has its own specific yeah. specificities and people are slightly different in each country. And, uh, you know, I've grown up all over the world. So I actually, um, I mean, I'm originally French, for example, and I've, I've been, all, <laughs> I've lived everywhere, for the, I think, yeah. Um, People have different ways of addressing the problem, right? They have different methods, mm -hmm. and it's nice to be kind of in move around these different pockets of yeah. pockets of community because you learn things, you know, see how people are different in the way that they that they that they network together. Um, I also like the fact that you know, like besides Lisbon, is a small. It's smaller, right? So I mean, we're running. It still at, is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's we're running at nine hundred plus. Yeah, you exactly. Know, yeah, but you know, London. Yeah, it's London. Kind of, yeah, 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 exactly. plus it's in So <laughs> yeah, it's. Um, I mean, we're like third or fourth biggest in I, I, in, in, yeah. in in the. You know, you know what? I stopped going to Infosec because there's a lot of noise around yeah. there. But, yeah. but it's it's usually fun to, to meet everyone there and, yeah. and to see everyone there. Yeah. yeah, it is. I mean, it's. I mean, and that's why a lot of people, you know, they say they're going to Infosec will actually come and see us. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, no, okay. I, I mean, it's. I, I like the smaller. I, I, I like the smaller aspects of some of these, you know, regional yeah. B sides because you can, you have more opportunity to network, and it's, just, it's different. I wouldn't compare. I All mean, right. it's completely different. I mean, everybody has their way of doing things. That's what that's what I kind of like about B sides, exactly. right? It's like, although it's like it's become a global brand and people recognize it as you know a, a security conference, yeah. a small security conference, community driven security conference. Each one has its own specialities yeah. and its own peculiarities. It's now, are you enjoying Lisbon, the sun, yeah. the weather, well, that's the beautiful food, weather. <laughs> and, and, uh, and the badges, as you can see? They were yeah, fun. I have some. I have some bigger ones somewhere. I think you know. I, I was like, I like this morning. He was talking about you could you could almost put Lotus Notes or whatever on the. <laughs> I literally loaded Apple dot Apple the Apple operating system off. I think it was ten or fifteen of these things on my yeah. Apple two. I mean that you know it's like I've. Been in this industry for a long time, and you're sitting there. You're like, yeah, this is just. I, see, I remember this. Thing. All right, <laughs> Do you remember all <laughs> well, the I, first IBM PS2s when oh, you yeah. had to sit exactly. there changing this while the OS loaded? <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. I had one of those. Excellent. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. And um, well, hope to see you in the B sides of London. Yeah. Excellent. Bye. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs>